hello. Now, this really is quite fascinating. I've managed to lay my hands on an old map of the parish of Westfield. Uh, yes, the field is quite clearly marked, just outside the church boundaries. When the village grew, that field became the garden of a house. Perhaps if Mary and George Goodman had known that when they bought the house, but in their innocence they did not. And so they stepped through a doorway they could not see. Any one of us could do the same thing. George, it's her again. What? On the footpath, the other side of the hedge. Standing and staring. She's harmless, Mary. Why can't she leave the place alone? She did live here nearly 50 years. We must be polite. I thought she was moving out of the area. Miss Wilkins, how nice to see you. Use the side gate. How are you settling in at the old place? Quite a new place by the time Mary is finished. You've been so kind the way you've let me visit. Any time. George. Ah. Oh. It's been years since I've been here. The old summer house, yes. It's certainly seen better days. The new one will go on the lawn over there. The new one? Surely you're not... You could restore this. We're taking it down. The view of the church will be perfect once it's gone. And there'll be a rose garden here. I shall sit and sketch. It'll be ideal. Oh. It's been there an awfully long time. It was there before me, you know. Do you really think... It must be quite unsettling, seeing all the changes happening to a place where you've spent so long. Come and have some tea, Miss Wilkins. She seemed quite upset. Pass the marmalade, dear. Thank you. You're not still obsessing about Miss Wilkins, I hope. She's bound to be upset. You're so indulgent, George. I suppose it was more that she seemed concerned, on edge. A different sort of thing altogether. Oh, good! They've asked me to join the church bazaar committee. And they want me to have a stall and sell my sketches. Your sketches are excellent. I've always told you. Yes. Yes, you have, George. Thank you. You're happy, George. It's a big move we've made, and I know it was mainly me. It's the right move, totally. And it's mainly you I care about. Will Jim be tackling the summer house today? He certainly will. He's roped me in to help. I've got so many plans for this place. Oh, George, I know I can be... Thank you for putting up with me. Always a pleasure. I see what you mean. It's really just this that's been holding the whole place up, isn't it? And the rest of the wood is just rotten. But this post, well, someone knew what he was doing when he put this in. Feel it, Mr Goodman. Not an inch you give. Mm. Oh, that is something. Yeah. Get around the other side, Jim. See if we can pull it out together. What you want? Yeah, it's starting to go. You push and I'll pull! What? I... What did I say? Got it! Oh. I, don't, I don't know whether, whether that was a, a good idea. Jim, you were right. I made Jim take the rest of the day off. I don't know what we... Mary, on, on your neck. Ow! Oh! oh! Something stung me. Wasp. I've got it. I'll get you some ice. What's a wasp doing at this time of year? Oh, it's Wilkins. I didn't expect you. So, the summer house gone. And here it is, the post out of the ground. Brutal looking thing. I hope these changes don't upset you. Oh, uh, it was just something from the past. Tell me. Get it out of your system. People nowadays are keen on that, aren't they? I'd been looking for my brother, Frank, to fetch him for supper. I thought he might be hiding, but here he was, asleep on the bench in the old summer house, arm wrapped round that very post. 
The look on his face. I thought he might be ill or even... He was all right. I shook him and I told him to wake up. And wake up he did, with a scream. He was beside himself with fright. Nanny had to sit up with him all that night. But at last he told me... He'd been dreaming. Where were you on the 19th of October? Be this written by your own hand? In the name of the king, speak up, sir, so that this court can hear your answer. Every question seemed directed against him, as if the judge had already made up his mind of his guilt. Then he was out of doors on a raw morning with snow about. He was being led to a wooden platform. There was a fire burning nearby, and he knew that something unspeakable was going to happen to him. At the height of his terror, I woke him. Extraordinarily unpleasant dream. Dream, yes. Mr. Goodman, just how could a boy of seven have such a vivid idea of what went on in a court? A court that seemed to belong in an earlier century. What sort of dream is that? Frank would never speak of it again, although I did ask. Oh, yeah. I... Not long after, my father had the summer house repaired. His gardener came to the post and he said, we won't be moving that. He's fast enough down there and so he should stay. When I asked him what he meant, he wouldn't say. But there, the post is out now. Though really, looking at it whole, as it were, I'd call it a steak, wouldn't you? Pass the marmalade. Oh, careful, George. What is it? You don't look as though you slept. Oh, was it the foxes? Did you hear them last night? I'd swear they were howling right under the bedroom window. George, I finished the dream. <sighs> Frank's dream that I told you about. It was a trial. And the judge, he was fearful. He twisted everything I said. Dates, places. And I knew how it was going to end. And I was afraid. And the judge feasted on my fear. He relished George, it. George, George, it was a dream. No, no, this was different. Never mind about the tea, it doesn't matter. I was laid on straw and jolted along. And then I had to go up some steps, people holding my arms. I didn't want to go up those steps. You push and I'll pull. That was what they said. And that was what I said when... Jim and I, I was what they were pushing and pulling this time, and there was a smell that was like a burnt roast meal. I stripped off my shirt. The foxes, thank God, woke me. George, Miss Wilkins has filled your mind with I don't know what. That woman, forget about it. <sighs> I'll clear up here. I'm going to go and sketch in the rose garden if you need me. Now, don't dwell on that dream. All right, then, Mrs Goodman. Oh, Jim. Good to see you back. Ah. Yes? Those bushes over there, Jim. A moment ago... Is it my imagination? I thought I saw... Well, it, it looked like a face, but not wholly real. I, I thought it was a, a cardboard mask, the, the sort people wear on Guy Fawkes night. It might have blown into the bushes. Hmm. Well, can't see anything. November was a month ago. Yes, of course it was. Well, thank you. <laughs> someone there? George? Who is that? Oh, 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 oh. 
My wife, I got your message. What's happened? The doctor's with her now, Mr. Goodman. But what happened? She thought she saw a face. I told you Brighton would blow the cobwebs out of us. You were right, George. Your dream and what I thought I saw. Blown away like the foam on the waves. A honeymoon hotel. What a lovely treat. I really don't deserve you, George. I hardly want to go back. What is it? It's from the Essex Archaeological Society. What do they want? We are especially anxious to know whether you possess the original of the enclosed engraving. It represents Sir William Nash, a judge who played a prominent part in persecuting those alleged to have taken part in the Popish plot at the end of the 17th century. The traitors cut open, their own entrails burned in front of them before they hanged. Dear God. The engraving. Oh, that face. I saw that face in the flesh. It may also interest you to hear of a curious entry recently found in the registers that the parish was so much troubled after the death of Sir William that the rector of Westfield summoned the parsons of all the neighbouring areas to disinter him and lay him according to the ancient way to his final rest, which they did. The entry ends by saying, the stake is in a field adjoining to the churchyard of Westfield. Perhaps you can let us know if any knowledge of this tradition is current in your parish. It really is a very good likeness. I thought it was a mask, but it wasn't. They're treating you well. Mary? Do we really need to sketch it again? Oh, dear? I must get it quite right. It was a face peeping out, all smooth it was, and, and pink. Pink and smooth. So the jaws were clean shaven and the eyes tightly shut. It had little drops of sweat on its forehead. Mary. Oh, I didn't get it quite right. And the mouth of the face was open. And just one tooth showed below the upper lip. It's such a good likeness. Now, here's Nurse. I'll, I'll stay for lunch. Shall I? Thank you, George. I don't know how you put up with me. Oh, Mary. Always a pleasure.